Hi, welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation. Today's project is based on Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. The developers of the game implemented the throw mechanic that was first introduced in the mobile Pokemon Go and improved its visual animations and effects. My goal for this project is to try and simulate the animation and effects of the Pokeball throw using Unity. Here are the steps I needed to follow. First, I needed to work on the animations of when the Pokeball is thrown, when it hits the Pokemon, when it opens, and when it falls. Then, I had to work on the camera changes, the camera movement, and the camera zoom. Last thing was to add the particle effects of the Pokeball trail, the capture effects, the Pokeball closing animation, the blinks, and ending particles. First thing I did was to download a Pokeball model from Birkin on Sketchfab. Then I went to Maya just so I could split the model in half to prepare it for animation. I started the project by positioning the Pokeball and Pokemon which is represented by the capsule using a screenshot of the game as reference. Since I was going to work on a bunch of animations, I've added the Dootween plugin to my project. Then, I started working on the script that would trigger all the animations. For this code, I used the DoTween sequence. DoTween sequences allow us to create sequential tweens. On a sequence, whenever a pen is used, it adds the tween to the end of the sequence. But when join is used, the tween is played at the same time as the last tween on the sequence. Knowing that, the first tween I appended on my sequence was do jump. This tween allows the Pokeball object to literally jump towards a desired position, in this case, the Pokemon capsule. At the same time as the jump tween, I wanted to add a rotation for the Pokeball, so I added a do rotate tween to the sequence using join, so it could play at the same time as the last tween. Then, when that first throw animation was over, I appended another do jump for the Pokeball, this time, the final position of the jump was a little above of the Pokemon capsule. And at the same time as the second jump, I added a do look at tween so the Pokeball would look at the Pokemon capsule in midair. Next thing to add on the sequence was the Pokeball opening. For this, I created pivots on the edge of the Pokeball halves so I could easily animate it by simply rotating the X axis. So on the sequence, I did both parts of the Pokeball open by using Do Local Rotate. To add a bit of smoothness to the opening animation, I used an East type of Out Back. This means the Pokeball will open a bit more than it should and go back immediately. Then I added on the sequence the Pokeball closing by rotating its parts back to zero. I also added the fall animation to the sequence by simply changing the Pokeball Y position to the ground. You can see that this effect doesn't look very good at first, but by adding an ease to the tween of the type out bounce, the Pokeball bounces off until it stops in the final position. Now it was time to work on the cameras. For this I added the Cinemachine package to the project. Cinemachine allows us to have very cinematic features on the project. So I added two virtual cameras. One in the origin position and one on the end position of the scene. To cut between cameras, I just need to activate the second camera when the time is right. So on the sequence, I can run lines of code by using append callback. So when the Pokeball is ready to close, I activate the second camera. I've also set the second camera target to be the Pokeball, so the camera always looks at it. Then I started working on the second do twin sequence for the camera. On this sequence, I basically move the second camera towards the Pokeball using do move Z. I repeated this three times with intervals just like the original game. At the same time as the zoom tweens, I added a shake rotation tween to the Pokeball. Now it was time to add the particle effects. 
The first particle effect was on the Pokeball throw. So I created a particle system attached to the Pokeball using world simulation space to make the particles leave a trail. Then I worked on the three particles of when the Pokeball opens. The first one is a single emission flash. The second one is a single emission with a stretch billboard render mode to make the particles stretch. The third one is a spiral dust similar to the fire arrow project from the last video that rotates and moves to the center. Then I added the beam particle that moves to the center of the Pokeball. For that, I created a particle system with emission over distance so it would only emit when it's moving. I also did the three particles of when the Pokeball is closing. That is composed by some stretch lines, a bit of dust, and a single emission circle. Lastly, I did a particle that blinks in the tip of the Pokeball. Follow it by the circle particle emission on the center and also the stars burst. Now for some polish, I downloaded this environment from Regius on the asset store and added it to my scene. Then I added some post processing like bloom, depth of field and color grading. After some adjustments, this is how it turned out. This project was especially challenging because of the amount of animations, but the result was super worth it. As always, the link for the project's repository is on the description. If you have any ideas on what I should work on, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like, subscribe and share. See you on the next project.